All right. Hi, I'm Melissa Atkins. Um, I am going to do this because I did this activity with a second grade class yesterday. And this is either for them to redo when they get back or for another class that might not might need these instructions as well. Um, what we were doing, we were doing weather safety posters using Google Drawings. The teacher did a, created a simple assignment in Google Classroom. Didn't have to add anything. She just went to plus, create assignment, wrote weather safety poster, changed the due date to none so the students could go back to it, and then just clicked assign. That's all there was for the teacher side of it. So let's get to the student side of it. All right, so when the student gets to the assignment in classroom, they go to open, and since the teacher did not give them a template, which is fine, and we didn't mean to this time, students click create. We're going to do Google Drawings, so we go to Google Drawings. And when it pops up in the middle with your name on it, then you click on it and open it up. There it is. All right, so some of the key features in using Google Drawings, and again, the difference between Google Drawings and Google Slides is that Google Drawings is just one page. It's not a whole presentation. This is good for posters and graphic organizers. Um, I'm going to show you some of the, the exact same things um, very quickly, the features that were discussed with that second grade class. First thing we wanted to do was give it a title. And like I told them, told the students, you can use the regular text box and drag it out and type your title in it. Um, I did tornadoes. That's kind of boring. You can do that for some of your stuff on here. So to delete that, I just clicked on it and then I hit my delete or backspace key on my keyboard. But it's more fun to use word art and it, it's it's prettier. So to do word art, that was the first thing we discussed. You click on insert in the menu and you will see word art. Little box appears in the top. You type what you need there. Remember to give your title a capital letter. And then to make it get on your poster, all you do is hit enter or return on your keyboard and it goes in the middle of the page. That is a default. And as long as those boxes are around your word art, like I'm gonna click off of it and you won't see these. So I'm gonna click off and you won't see the extra tools up at the top. But when you click on it, that's where you can go to the paint can and change the color. Color. Um, of course, you could do the border too. You could change the font style if you have different fonts and different things on there to make it look a little different. You grab to resize objects, word, art, pictures, text boxes, whatever. You grab by the handles on the corners to keep the proportions the same. And you can drag it with that little cross arrow. Um, remember at the little top, the little circle at the top, if you click it, you can turn your words a little bit. So that was word art. So that was insert, word art, and go from there. The next thing I wanted to teach them um, was to stress to them about putting images on their page the correct way and the way that would automatically cite where those images came from to make sure that if anybody questioned where you got your images from, you'd be able to just click on them and go back to them. So I, I teach the teachers and the students not to use the image icon like here, or insert image. Rather, this is the way that um, I teach to do it. So you go to tools in the menu. So tools and then research. And on the window that pops up on the right, you change the G to images, the one with the camera. And this is the most important part. There's a little triangle right here, drop down arrow. You need to click on it. And you need to change not filtered by license by clicking on it and click choose free to use, share or modify even commercially. We want to make sure that the pictures we use are uh, legal and um, uh, we won't be infringing on any copyright issues and won't get in any trouble. So then we can go back up to the search box and click tornadoes. So then any pictures that come up in here are pictures that I can legally use and then you have to drag them out. Now if you click I'm going to drag it all the way out on the page. So it dragged it. Did you see how it automatically cites where it comes from? But if I click off of it, it's not part of the poster. It's just access. Anybody needs to go to my Google Drawings, they can tell that's where I got the website, the image from. Now, one of the, a couple of troubleshooting things with images, sometimes students will just click on a picture instead of dragging. And it'll either come up like this, and they just simply X out that tab. Or it'll take them to another website completely. Oh, mine's Let's try one that'll work like I need it to. So I can click on it. 
and it took me to the website that that image is on. Instead of dragging the picture over, they just accidentally clicked on it. They just need to X that tab up at the top and get busy again. Something else that happens a lot quite frequently with students is when they drag, they don't all the way get it on the page. They kind of leave it on the side of the page and it freaks everybody out because your drawing goes on the side. All you have to do, by the way, you can just delete that since it is selected. You could just hit your backspace key on the keyboard to get rid of your image. But to make your page go back, the easiest way is just X out of the research box and then go back into it. Do you remember how? Tools, research. Change the G to images and make sure when you click that drop down arrow that it says free to use. All right. So that's dealing with images. Once it's on your page, you can take it by the handles and resize, or you could take it by the circle and turn it. That's one of the things that we discussed yesterday. All right, so now we need some information on our poster about tornadoes, how to um, weather safety tips. So instead of, like I said, using WordArt again, um, which you can do, or using the text box with, mo with that's what most people know how to do. There's another thing you can do to add um, text, and that's by using the Shapes tool. This is a cool tool to use. So watch what I do. Up in the icons uh, in the menu up at the top, there's a Shapes tool. You see a circle and a square. Those are shapes, so that's, that's where your shapes are. You can click on it, and you can hover, and you have all these different shapes you can get. Now, remember if you're writing in one, if you need to type in one, to make sure it's appropriate. Um, for instance, you would not want to get the, the no sign, no symbol, or the donut because you really wouldn't be able to get your words in there. So to choose a shape that you can actually put information in, you would simply click on it. I like the cloud. I'm going to click on it and see how it gave me the little addition sign, the plus sign, crosshairs, whatever you want to call it. But then I'm going to simply drag it out on my page. And I'll let go. And then the trick to making it a text box is all you have to do is double click in it. So I'm going to double click in it and now I can type, um, I'm just going to say, get indoors quickly. Now, once you've got it in there, you can go back and change the font style and all that. You can also change the fill color of the cloud or the shape. To do that, you just go to the shapes, to the paint tool up at the top and click and it changed that color. Now remember you have to have your items selected or those icons up at the top you won't be able to do it. So see I click on it and they show up. I click off, they disappear. So that that's one of the things the kids the students mess up on. All right, so another trick is when to change um, the font style and color and size and everything. A lot of times it's hard for students to highlight. So then uh, a couple of options here. When, when you're dealing with shape tools, if you select the shape somewhere that's not close to the words, like up here, then it's like you highlighted all the words and you can change everything in there. Font style, size. You can center it using the alignment icon. All right, so that one needs to be a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, so that's using, um, or another way you can highlight your words real quickly in some in an object is to click three times real fast, one, two, three, and see how it highlighted everything. That's another little trick. Um, that's good to know. All right, so we talked about inserting word art, which is insert word art, type your information, and then hit enter on your keyboard. Well, I showed you the correct way to do um, images, so they're cited for you automatically you click on tools and you click research and main important thing to do over here is click on that drop down arrow make sure it says free to use and you change the G to images just so you deal with your pictures before you start typing and uh, I showed you a little text boxes using the shapes tool so you just click on one hover this sometimes takes students practice and then you just double click in it to type your words type here the last thing I actually told them is right now it's that checkerboard background pattern. That means it's transparent. If you're going to print these out, that's what I suggest you do on that. But otherwise, if you're going to embed them on your school wires page, um, your school website or anything like that, you could change the color of the background. Um, that's just by right clicking on the background and you get the background option and you can choose to change the color. All right, so I hope this is enough information to get you started using Google Drawings and, and you saw how easy it was to, for teachers to add it to the classroom and you saw how students open it. Um, 
oh, if the student has to come back to this assignment, they don't get finished. All they have to do, look up at the top, is the next time they go into Google Classroom, I can even close it up, up at the top. You know, Google automatically saves everything, so it's pretty cool. They need to get back into it. They just open it back up. It's right there in the middle. All of their stuff has been saved. Their information has been saved, and they just click on it, and they get back to work. All right. Hope this helps. Let me know how you use it. Thanks.